don't lie in bed and start worrying about the things you got to do the next day or worrying about what you didn't do good enough the previous day. Historically, anthropologists suggest that human beings had bimodal sleep and wind down before bedtime because your brain is not a light bulb that can be switched on or off. Popular demand is Dr. Shane Criado. A double board certified sleep medicine doctor and psychiatrist. Is a sleep performance expert. Specializes in sleep with athletes and brain health. Psychiatrist for US Olympic and Paralympic Committee. He's also the author of the best selling book, Peak Sleep Performance for Athletes. Introducing Dr. Shane Criado, who will fix your sleep first time ever in Health Shot Podcast. One of the questions that I wanted to ask you is because I do this and I'm a Goan and you're a fellow Goan and we love our afternoon siesta, right? So I try and get a 20 to 30 minute nap in the afternoon and it just comes naturally. So the question over here is, does napping contribute to daily sleeping requirements? So if I sleep for two hours during the afternoon or evening, which a lot of athletes do, and then I sleep for six hours at night, I've completed eight hours of sleep. Now, doctor, does this count or do I need eight hours of continuous sleep? It counts. So as long as you're getting your ideal amount of sleep in a 24 hour period, that's absolutely fine. Historically, anthropologists suggest that human beings had bimodal sleep. So a few hours in different parts of the day. Now it made a lot of sense back then if some people had to stay awake, look out for wild animals, make sure the fire was going, feeding, raising the, the kids, all that kind of stuff. So bimodal sleep made a lot of sense. In our modern world, we want to squish it all into the night's time, which is fine, but many cultures, as you mentioned, have this siesta. Some studies have suggested that if people are napping during the day, their heart attack rate goes up by 30, 40%. But those studies, if you look into the details, those people are feeling sleepy during the day, which means there's something wrong with their nighttime sleep, their sleep quality. But a strategic nap that I use the term with my athletes or a tactical nap I use with my military folk is a fixed time, fixed duration each day that compensates for total sleep need in a 24 hour period. So strategic napping is a powerful, powerful tool to boost performance, productivity, quality of life. A NASA study showed this as well with their pilots. NASA looked at pilots who got a 26 minute nap, a strategic nap that was timed at a fixed time. And they found that their alertness and productivity was boosted by 30 and 50%. Wow. So what does that mean for an average person who has a regular job or a student? If you get a strategic nap, at a fixed time, fixed duration, is you're gonna be able to do that much more learning or be that much more efficient, 30 to 50% more in the same amount of time. That's awesome. You know, I actually do this half an hour nap for many years now because I counsel in the latter half of the day. I start as early as eight o'clock in the morning. In the days I don't get that nap, I'm very cranky by the five o'clock in the evening counseling. And I work globally with clients from your part of the world, which is USA. So they're just about waking up at around, uh, 6.30 evening India time. And I notice if I get that afternoon nap, I'm all bubbly, I'm all good, I'm all focused, I'm taking down notes and I can remember the last counseling I did with them. So if it subscribes to NASA pilots and you work with your athletes and a nutritionist it works for, I think that's going to be the new mantra. We're going to get people who start napping for 26 minutes. Dr. Shane Criado, in my opinion, has written one of the best books, Peak Sleep Performance for Athletes. I got a signed copy from the US from him many months ago. So he signed it and that's there. But what's very interesting is I started making my own notes at the back of the book. And Dr. Shane, I got to say your book is really amazing in terms of how you put it in very easily for the athlete to read it. So as a medical expert, I read it and I've got tons of information which I can convey to my athletes. But I actually left it for my dad and he read the book cover to cover 
And I kid you not, one day at nine o'clock in the evening, I saw him going to sleep. He had come to stay with me for a vacation. Like, Dad, where are you going? I'm going after sleep. He's like, why? You always sleep at 12 o'clock at night. No, no, no. Dr. Shane says it's better to get to die, to sleep earlier. And I was like, your book had that sort of impact on an elderly person and old people are difficult to change their habits. So Shane, thank you for writing this book. Everyone should get a copy. Well, let's pick his brains beyond the book. Thank you so let's much, Ryan. Somebody... I, wish, I wish my father would listen to me when it comes to the sleep <laughs> strategies. And the book is for everyone to have access to these strategies that we use with our elite clients and athletes and celebrities for everyone to utilize so everyone can benefit from these sleep hacks. So thank you so much for that. And I'd be honored to collaborate with you on a book on sleep and nutrition. It could be amazing. Let's do that. Let's do that. That's our next project together. But sticking to this project, picking your brains, your gray cells, which, by the way, how much sleep did you get last night? Seven and a half hours. So the man practices what he preaches. One of the world's best sleep doctors and my good friend now from the other part of the world. The question coming in, can one get good quality sleep in less time, like say five or six hours? Does it depend from person to person? Some people sleep for hours. I get a lot of billionaire clients. They're like, I have, I need four hours of sleep and I'm trying to get them to get anti-aging and I've actually been able to prove to a lot of them that their age drops, visceral fat drops, cortisol improves and you know they, they burn fat, they look younger, they're much more responsive. But they just have this thing that they've been go-getters all their life, including doctors who say that, you know, I can get by with four hours of sleep. So now you're a doctor, you've done the research. Is it person dependent? And can you talk about the difference between quantity and quality of sleep? It is person dependent. Quality and quantity, I'll start with that because what's most important for sleep is not only the duration or the amount, but the quality, making sure that you're getting enough deep and dream sleep. And anything that impacts your quality of sleep is gonna be sleep fragmenting or disrupting, like sleep apnea, restless legs, a noisy snoring bed partner, pets jumping up and down in the bed, external noise, a cloud environment. Children in the same bed? Excuse me? Children in the same bed? Oh yeah, bad, horrible idea, terrible, because you're not gonna be able to sleep properly. So in fact, there was another study done on new mothers within the first six months of giving birth and taking care of the infant, their DNA aged mm -hmm. between three to seven years because DNA aging is directly correlated with poor sleep. Within six months, their DNA aged by, by years. So did you have any pregnant uh, expecting mother come to you for guidance and then have delivered a child? What would be your advice to the mother? Because you can't tell a mother, hey, keep your baby away. So what would your uh, practical advice be to the mother? There's a way in which you swaddle the baby for most comfort, number mm -hmm. one. Number two is the baby needs to be in a separate cot, not on, in your bed. Number three, you need to train the baby with regular feed times rather than go by the baby cycle, create new cycles. Now babies need most of the time they're sleeping and the older they get, they need less and less sleep. So you can actually train your kids. So it's, it's what's called sleep coaching to feed at certain times, to nap at certain times, to swaddle the baby appropriately, to have the right temperature in the room and the right amount of darkness. And then when a toddler is getting cranky, there's ways in which you can cut those unhealthy habits, what's called extinguishing negative behaviors. So the baby's crying, crying, crying. If you go and carry them, then they'll know, okay, well, if I cry, I'm gonna get attention. So there's specific strategies for, for new parents, young mothers to help them survive having a new baby but also helping the baby regulate their sleep because the baby's brain is growing at a rapid pace. If they're not getting good quality sleep, their growth hormone is reduced. So less growth, stunted growth, brain issues down the line if it's not developing properly with the right chunks of sleep. But That's getting awesome back advice. to your question. Thank you. Getting back to your question about five or six hours, some billionaires need four hours of sleep. Look, I mean, 1% of the population are called short sleepers where they need six hours or less of sleep. And there's genetic variations to show that these short sleepers do fine. There's no long-term impact in their genetics, their DNA, their aging, their risk factors, heart attacks, strokes, diabetes, cancers, dementias. 
but they're only 1% of the population, okay? Now, ideally, most people who are adults need seven and a half hours of sleep. We spoke about this earlier. Teenagers need more. Athletes who are training at a very high level need nine hours of sleep or six sleep cycles, 10 and a half hours, even 12 hours. Roger Federer would speak about getting 12 hours of sleep in a 24 hour period. So how can you get more quality sleep if you're getting nine hours of sleep and still feeling unrefreshed? Maybe it's a sleep quality issue. Maybe you have sleep apnea. So in that case, you can treat the sleep qualitative issue and maybe your sweet spot in terms of optimal sleep is closer to seven, seven and a half hours. That's awesome. Meditating. Meditating is a great way of calming the brain down, slowing it down. So you might need less sleep. If you're highly anxious, you're burning through resources very quickly and you may need more recovery sleep or you may feel sleepy during the day. So if you mitigate anxiety, if you meditate, the Dalai Lama said sleep is the best meditation, then you might get away with better quality sleep. So a less need for a amount of sleep that you're getting in a 24 hour period. I agree with the Dalai Lama and I agree with you, Dr. Shane. I have actually fallen asleep in my meditation classes. So then you're doing it body, right. Yeah, my body knows knows correctly. And, and speaking of this, this is very valuable advice that you've you've given us. Uh, I want to get into picking your brains on some rapid fire questions so that our listeners uh, can learn more about what's your medical opinion, the psychology of the brain and the sleep science. So I hope you're warmed up, stretched out. I'm going to go quick, rapid fire, and you've just got to give me answers in one minute. And I'm going to go to the next question. So are you ready, Dr. Shane? I am. All right. Let's see how good your sleep was yesterday and whether you have 32% lesser alertness or you got 100% alertness. First one, how can one track their sleep? Do you think buying a watch or an exercise variable or some devices or these rings, um, uh, does it help you? And if you can't buy these variables, how can a person track their sleep? Don't buy a wearable. It's a waste of your time and your money. They don't accurately detect deep and dream sleep. As a, I'm throwing this out. <laughs> I don't wear a wearable. I'm old fashioned. If you want to look at your total sleep as a rough measure, fine. But if you're trying to look at deep and dream sleep, people can get obsessive. They can develop what's called orthosomnia. And I tell my athletes, it doesn't matter. Those wearables are roughly measuring. How, how accurate or inaccurate are they? In a study with 10 wearables a few years ago, they found only three out of 10 times could they accurately detect deep and dream sleep. That's worse than tossing a coin. Rough measure, yes. Individual measures, rubbish. So I use a barometer when I go to sleep. I try and increase the oxygen in the room. So if I put the AC on, I keep the window slightly open because I notice if I don't get enough of oxygen, I don't sleep deeply. I get up very groggy the next morning. So I, I think maybe just listening to your intuition, um, that, that really, really works at the end of the day. And maybe an alarm clock, a traditional alarm clock, how many hours? Oh, I'm going to sleep at 11 o'clock at night. I'm getting up at 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I got eight hours of sleep. Right. Yeah. So I want you and every listener and every athlete and celebrity I work with to get more tuned with their body. If you're waking up refreshed and can function throughout the day, you're getting the right amount of sleep. That amount of sleep is right for you. Awesome. Awesome. And if I can come in over here, magnesium threonate and uh, apigenin found in chamomile tea actually induce a deeper sleep. So just have that and fingers crossed you're going to get a deeper sleep. Next question. Doc, this is from our ancient Ayurveda from this part of the world and the yoga. Is yoga nidra, non-sleep deep rest effective? Are there any other techniques that you suggest to reduce stress in a person just before they go to sleep? Yes, and yes. Yoga Nidra is a great strategy to get into the theta, the delta states for healing, for deep healing. And it targets your nervous system, so it strengthens the rest and relax system and calms the sympathetic nervous system that's the fight or the flight nervous system. In this deeper relaxation, it also releases more melatonin. It's a powerful antioxidant, helps with immune function, blood pressure, stress hormone levels, and induces restful sleep. So melatonin is more than just a supplement to help you fall asleep. But yoga nidra is extremely powerful 
in that non-sleep deep rest category of strategies to calm that nervous system down very powerfully, very quickly. And there are other strategies for non-sleep deep rest. One of my favorites is physiological sighing. It's a breathing technique that you got it. So physiological sighing is a deep inhale and then even more oh. of an inhale. Oh, a double inhale. Yes. At the peak of inhalation, inhale even more and then as slowly as possible, blow out through your mouth as if you're breathing through a straw. You got it. Even if you take your heart rate, five minutes of doing physiological sighing is more effective than 30 minutes of meditation. You'll find a drop. So what happens with my NBA guys who have night games and their adrenaline is pumping, their testosterone is through the roof, the cortisol is pumping, physiological sighing, yoga nidra, progressive awesome. muscle relaxation, okay. golden. Speaking of golden, five tips for light sleepers because they would pay you in gold to get a good night's sleep. That's the difference with getting the gold medal and not even making it to the podium and studies have shown this as well. Yeah. So most important strategy is fixed wake up time every single day. And when you wake up, don't say hit the snooze and the alarm. Keep your alarm clock away from the bed so you're forced to get out of bed. And when you get up, hydrate, maybe warm water, maybe some cayenne pepper or some cinnamon or saffron, turmeric to help your metabolic rate go up, help flush out toxins, help with inflammation, and then get some sunlight on your face to drive down the melatonin levels. Don't stare at the sun and then complain that you got blind, but there has to be some sunlight on your face for 20 to 30 minutes. And eat a healthy meal before bedtime, high protein, slow carbs, and wind down before bedtime because your brain is not a light bulb that can be switched on or off. It needs to synchronize slowly and get into a habit of falling asleep. Don't lie in bed and start worrying about the things you got to do the next day or worrying about what you didn't do good enough the previous day. One hour before that bedtime is your mini vacation, right? Sleep is what I like to call it. And your room is supposed to be your cave. Cave dwellers back in the day didn't have flat screen TVs or windows. Or electricity for that matter. Or EMFs and electricity, right? So winding down writing down your to-do list, maybe journaling your worry list, kind of deconstructing what happened the previous day will not make your brain think about those things when you're lying in bed. The brain is going to be free of encumbrances. Then you do the yoga nidra. Then you do the physiological sighing and the progressive relaxation. And of course, if you've eaten healthy foods for your protocols with your clients, and maybe the need for certain supplements to help boost those levels in healthy ranges. Almost every single person allowing for certain underlying issues like sleep apnea or severe anxiety is going to have beautiful, restful, high quality sleep. Which one of your celebrity clients slept the longest and the best? I would say Mike Bryan because he's the most recent guy I worked with. He's a tennis player who's won 18 Grand Slams. And wow. he, yeah, he's such a great guy, such a good human being as well. And this kind of tracks in with the wearable he was using. I don't have any stake in any wearable companies, just so everyone knows. He used the Aura Ring and he contacted me several months ago randomly and said, hey, I want help with my sleep. I said, is this a joke? How do you know of me? I have hardly any followers on Instagram. And he FaceTimed me. It was this guy. And he said, I've tried seeing sleep doctors for decades. I've had horrible sleep issues my entire playing career. I could have won way more Grand Slams. And I said, okay, let's fix your sleep. I said, give it maybe six weeks or so. He called me three days later saying, I don't know what it is. My sleep issues are resolved. His aura ring showed that his HRV, heart rate variability, was the same when he had crappy sleep and when he had optimal sleep. He was in bed and I saw those numbers. The screenshots of that he sent me as well. 10 hours, nine hours, getting maybe seven, nine, five hours, variable, highly variable, but waking up feeling horrible each day. What's his sweet spot now? His sweet spot is seven hours. Seven hours, he's waking up refreshed, functioning throughout the day, training. Maybe he's in the category of the short sleepers because uh. people are training that intensity. 
Yeah. Need maybe nine so, or ten so, hours. So it would be logic in my head is that no, no, no. You need to sleep more. Doctor Shane says that people who slept longer had four point three more accuracy in basketball hoop. But we need to actually work out the bio individuality of a person for sleep. Exactly awesome. what you do with your nutrition clients. Yep. Awesome, awesome. If you were a nutritionist, and I know you've written this in your book, peak sleep performance for athletes, and what would be your top go to? nutrition supplements nutrition foods herbs can you rattle off what are your go tos and everyone listening in there's a bio individual purpose right chamomile tea might work for me but it might not work for dr shane but this is what we keep in our little bit of our food basket or medical basket or or or, or uh, what would you call it a small toolkit to help people out so from a nutrition domain what would you dr shane prescribe well as Again, I'm preaching to the choir, so please correct me or, or add anything you want. We were thinking about foods that help boost sleep quality and what foods contain the supplements to boost food quality and sleep quality. Now, we know that if you're eating certain foods in, that have certain ingredients like melatonin, 5-HTP, GABA, you may not be getting the therapeutic dose that you need from the foods alone. But the bottom line is healthy foods for sleep would involve high protein, slow carbs. We think about what foods contain melatonin, tart cherries, corn, asparagus, tomatoes, pomegranate, olives, grapes, broccoli, cucumber have more melatonin, right? Grains like ro rolled oats, barley may have higher melatonin, nuts and seeds like walnuts, peanuts, sunflower seeds, flaxseed may have higher melatonin levels. When you think about 5-HTP, why is that important? It's needed to make serotonin. What sources in the food can you get more 5-HTP, more serotonin? Tryptophan, the amino acid tryptophan, which the body uses to make 5-HTP, is found in turkey, chicken, milk, pumpkin, sunflower seeds, turnip, collard greens, seaweed. Japanese are big on seaweed because there's astaxanthin, which is a powerful antioxidant. Great. That's Gamma. what doctors say. I mean, it's like you're just pulling out everything from my book, which is eat healthier have a variation of all of these and you're going to get better. But what about GABA? Gamma amino butric acid. That's right. The sources are sleep supplements like valerian, magnesium, L-theanine, L-arginine, kava, passion flower, American ginseng, all have an effect on the brain's GABA activity. But food sources include kefir, yogurt, whole grains, beans, um, tea such as green tea, black tea, oolong tea, fermented foods, Big sources, walnuts, almonds, sunflower seeds, Speak, and shrimp, sp halibut. Speaking speaking of tea, we never talked about caffeine. We didn't touch about caffeine. So um, I have this huge no-no not to drink caffeine after 5 o'clock in the evening because I get a very light sleep. So I don't go into that deep sleep. I can actually see, hear myself thinking. So what's your take on caffeine from teas and caffeine from coffee and then these caffeine supplements? Yeah. Green tea has high amounts of caffeine. So... Green tea is a no-no before bed. You want chamomile tea? It has apigenin, as you mentioned. Good for sleep. But some people are more sensitive to caffeine than others. Why is caffeine even used as a stimulant? It doesn't necessarily stimulate the brain directly. It suppresses adenosine. Adenosine builds up during the day as you've not been getting sleep, and so it makes you sleepier. If it suppresses the added adenosine, it makes you less sleepy. Some people are more sensitive to caffeine. So... Those folks I recommend don't even have caffeine after 12 p.m. So 12 in the afternoon because it might affect your nighttime sleep. That, that's me. That's me. Yeah. I just have one cup of coffee in the morning. And in fact, uh, Dr. Shane, I want to share with you, we actually do the nutrigenomic testing for caffeine sensitivity. So whether your liver can actually process caffeine or not, and certain people just process it like that. So those are the guys who can drink coffee and fall asleep. I am in that category. And also those people who have ADHD. I realized this the hard way in medical school before a major exam. I said, mom, I need some coffee. I need some Coca-Cola. I need my Mars chocolates. I'm going to stay awake. Hmm. Didn't work. I fell right <laughs> asleep, woke up in a panic the next morning and realized that the stimulant effect calmed my ADHD brain down and I fell asleep. I probably got good marks because of that, because <laughs> she waste just about every paper in medical college. Guys, this is a gold medalist in college. So uh, we're getting some amazing tips from Dr. Shane. Dr. Shane, I know you have a very busy schedule. It's early morning there in America, and you're going to head off to your clinic to practice right now. I know you've got an appointment coming up. So I'm going to 
let you go in a few minutes from there. Five hacks that you would recommend to anybody from a sleep perspective. Fixed wake up time, morning sunlight, winding down before bed, an hour before your desired bedtime, the healthy food, maybe two or three hours before your desired bedtime, aerobic exercise, even brisk walking as if you're running late for 20 to 30 minutes each day, boost your deep sleep that flushes out the toxins, and strategic napping if at all you need it. Fixed time, fixed duration. What is the duration? 20 to 30 minutes for most people. Or if you've been out late at night partying or traveling with jet lag, you need a nap the next day. Don't wake up later on, like on a weekend, that's gonna push your brain into jet lag, but get a chunk of sleep to compensate for that sleep deficit you've had the previous night and you're golden. That's very, very golden. Final point, I personally use magnets under my mattress to sleep, to biohack my sleep, which is the pulsating electromagnetic frequency. I've used it with athletes uh, across the world. It does affect the brain waves. Uh, are there any other biohacking devices that uh, you have seen, you have heard about, uh, which uh, people who travel different time zones or don't get enough of sleep can use? So are there devices, equipments, I know you said that it's tossing a coin for the wearable. So I've just tossed away my exercise wearable and I'm not going to use it anymore. What could, what else could I use to hack my sleep and get better sleep? Travel kits. So there's less expensive options. There's more expensive options. Travel kits involve having the same kind of bedding wherever you go. There's HEST, for example, H-E-S-T. My, my, my wife has to listen to this. I carry my own pillow and my whole family laughs at me. My whole family laughs at me. They call me a diva because I carry one pillow inside my suitcase. And like, what's wrong with you? You're a smart man, Ryan. And as the, the saying goes, those who could not hear the music believed those that were dancing were <laughs> crazy, right? So I love this concept of taking your sleep kit wherever you go, keep taking your favorite pillow. I love a weighted eye mask that completely blacks out any ambient light. Because I don't have blackout blinds in my house. And when you travel, you never know the situation in a given room or on a plane. Blackout blinds or masks, great. Also, if you're traveling across time zones, there are specific protocols and calculations I've developed for my athletes or anyone who works with me to mitigate jet lag. When I had athletes going to Tokyo, 16 hour difference between Chicago and Tokyo, zero jet lag. When I go to India for Christmas, zero jet lag. When I go to Europe for work, zero jet lag it's a it's like a superpower but you if you know the sleep time that you need each day if you know your training times your exercise times if you know your meal times the travel times the duration of travel the time zones between the countries there's a calculation i developed and so part of that also involves light delivering glasses to reduce your melatonin and shift your rhythm quickly oh i've seen this at the rio olympics the athletes were wearing uh, lights on their glasses. I actually have a set which looks like Star Trek glasses. I have, a, I have a pair too. Can I have a look at it? Yes, absolutely. So are they still space age and geeky as before? They were like this huge one, huge ones oh, that went are, around my These are really cool. So just oh, put they them become like this. much more sleeker. These are the AO, AYO, and they okay. have a proprietary kind of calculation where these light emitting diodes give you the right intensity of light delivered to your retina. So is it and linked not to an bright. app on your phone? Yes, they also have an app that you can use and it's super simple, not very expensive at all. Because if you people say, well, I need light. Okay, fine, I'm gonna put on the lights in my house. That's insufficient. Sunlight has an intensity of 100,000 lux, L-U-X. Okay. The lights inside your house may be 1,000, 2,000 lux, but oh. you need at least 10,000 lux to influence your rhythm, your circadian rhythm, your melatonin. These ones deliver 10,000 lux equivalent. And there's also big light boxes you can use with 10,000 lux. But these I can wear, go about my daily life, drive, walk a dog, hang out, and 20 minutes goes by. Like I can read my work for the day and use these, especially in the winter time over here when the days get progressively longer and darker or rainy weather in the monsoon season, you don't get enough sunlight on your face. These kinds of things will help just tighten up your rhythm. You'll feel more refreshed and functional during the day. Awesome. You've heard Dr. Shane Criado talking to me about uh, sleep problems. I have so many questions which 
We're going to probably come back another day and talk about it. But you and I are sharing notes with our clients. I'm going to be sending my clients to you, Dr. Shade. If my audiences want to reach out to you, where can we find you? You can find me through my book, Peak Sleep Performance for Athletes. It's on Amazon and Kindle. Thank you. Thank you for that. Instagram is Peak Sleep Performance, one word. My email is info at shanecriado.com. My website is under construction, shanecriado.com. And my clients need your help so much as well. So I'm excited to, to have a team approach here. And I'm so grateful for you having me on today. Happy to come back anytime, Ryan. Dr. Shane, it's been awesome. I've got three hours before I need to get to sleep. I'm going to be doing all the stuff that you have encouraged me to do today. I'm going to continue with my naps. But to everyone who's tuned in today, if you've loved this episode, I need you to help me out. Change the way the world sleeps one person at a time. The health shot today was sleep is the new diet. And the health shot that we need is new awareness, not stuff that's going to panic you, but just simple stuff. And what I can take away from today's episode is the same time you wake up every day, have that sleep consistency. Napping is good. And... Final tip to everyone, the best nut on the planet with the highest melatonin content, which should be eaten four hours before you go to sleep, is 10 pistachios with the skin on unsalted. You have heard it first here from Ryan Fernando. The health shots with me are going to be power packed. They're going to give you better health. And I'm going to be getting you architects of human construct as we go forward. So stay tuned. Subscribe to this podcast and we change your life every day. If you've liked this episode, then please gift me a like, a share, or a subscribe. Or better still, if you comment, I'll come back to you. And don't forget, let's stay tuned for a new learning coming in. But till then, your body is the most expensive real estate. Take care of it.